So I'm going to be presenting you the new DRAN v1.5 uh, features. So these have not yet its mainnet for DRAN, but they are being tested on testnet. So maybe a quick reminder, DRAN stands for distributed randomness, and it is an open source uh, software we've been developing just like um, you know, Lotus and other open source software we're developing. And DRAN is used by the LIGO Philanthropy to run a free public randomness service so that anybody can query a public verifiable randomness from the LIGO Philanthropy network running DRAN. And so just like you know, you have DNS servers, NTP servers, uh, certificate transparency logs, and so on, uh, you have DRAN that can provide um, yeah, random beacons. And um, the nice thing about DRAN is that it's fully decentralized. So you only need a threshold of nodes to be working as intended for it to work uh, yeah, properly and for the whole um, randomness to be safe and unpredictable as well as bias resistant. And the very nice thing as well is that it's very stable. So you can take the DRAN beacons, and there is a very easy way of verifying them by just checking a BLS signature against a given public key for the legal entropy. And if that signature verifies, you can be sure that beacon is valid and has been properly generated by the legal entropy working together with a threshold of nodes um, collaborating to produce it. And so that is yeah, a few nice properties. And uh, as I said, it's open source, written in Go, and it's using a lot of fancy uh, cryptography behind the hood, such as verifiable secret sharing, distributed key generation. Um, but a pretty important thing here is that it's based on BLS signatures, which stands for Benelin Chacham uh, signatures. And more precisely, these BLS signatures are instantiated on the BLS 12.381. Uh, elliptic curve, which is a pairing friendly curve. And um, that is quite important for what comes next um, because BLS 12 381 is an elliptic curve where you have two groups and a pairing operation from these two groups, G1 and G2, onto a target group GT. And an important thing about these groups is that uh, group G1 is a regular group uh, of size 381 bits. But G2 uh, is a bit bigger. It's, um, it's an extension field of uh, dimension two. And so it has two coordinates uh, of size 381 bits. And GT is even much bigger. It's uh, the 12th uh, extension field of G1. So it's like 12 coordinates. But this is not too important because we're never storing GT values. We're always storing G1 or G2 values. And currently, DRUN works by having its public key on G1. So it means the public key for the group is 48 bit bytes. And um, signatures for each beacon are on G2. So each signature is 96 bytes. But there is actually no good reason for it to be like that. And um, that just means we have pretty big signatures and small public keys. And usually people do that because they have a lot of transactions being signed by many public keys and they want to include them in the block, you know? Um, and you can aggregate all signatures into a single signature pretty easily with BLS. But you cannot do so with the, well, you don't want to do so with the public keys because you want to know which address corresponds to which transaction and you, you need it to do verification, basically. So what people usually do is that they have short, uh, short public keys and big signatures because at the end of the day, they will aggregate all the signatures into a single one. But that is not how DRUN works. Uh, each beacon has its own signature and we never aggregate signatures in DRUN. So for DRUN, it would make more sense to have a big public key, just one, and then a lot of small signatures for each beacon. And this is exactly what we've done. So here is the anatomy of a DRAN beacon as it was previously. So the signature on G2 is encoded as a compressed point in hexadecimal. So it's taking 192 bytes, which is pretty big. And 
it even sometimes uh, was storing the preview signature, which is also 192 bytes. And then we also have the randomness value, which could be derived from the signature. So in theory, we could just give the round number and the signature, and that should be enough for anybody to verify a DRAN beacon and use the DRAN beacon to produce the randomness they need. Uh, so that was how it looked previously. Um, now, with our new scheme using G1 for signatures, everything is much more compact because now uh, we have the signatures which are only taking 48 bytes, which encoded in X is only 96 bytes. And that is much nicer uh, for our HTTP relays because it's taking less bandwidth to transmit to the clients. And it's also much nicer to store. And this means we could save at least 37% of space and bandwidth just by switching to a new scheme using G1 for signatures and G2 for public keys. Um, but, you know, we didn't just stop there. And so, um, because using swapped groups also has other um, signification for many people that will be very interesting. Um, it is that the the fact of verifying a BLS signatures, of BLS signatures on G2 is quite expensive. Uh, as you can see here, I have the gas cost uh, as estimated if it was running on Ethereum. Um, the gas costs of verifying a signature on G2 would be roughly 226,000 gas. And now with the swap groups, since G1 uh, signatures are much smaller, they are faster to verify on Ethereum and on any blockchain that is supporting BLS actually. And so now it would only cost like uh, 156,000 gas roughly. Um, these are estimates because Ethereum hasn't shipped native BLS support yet. So it's, you know, um, take a grain of salt there um, anyway. We also didn't stop there because um, we noticed, well, we want to launch a new network for DRAN to use this new signature scheme, you know? Um, but if we were to launch a new network, we thought we could do more things. And um, one feedback we had from DRAN users was that 30 seconds is long. And while Filecoin uh, block time is exactly 30 seconds and it's fine for most Filecoin users, people were running applications that need randomness that is verifiable in a more frequent manner or a bit constrained by the 30 seconds frequency of the DRAN network. Like if you are, I don't know, a casino, you might want to be able to run a new draw every three or five seconds. And so we are planning on increasing the frequency of the new mainnet network to five or three seconds. Uh, and that increased frequency would mean we would need to store maybe 10 times more beacons. And so we looked at how we were storing beacons and we realized it was not very efficient because we were storing them just like we were serving them on the HTTP relays. That means we were storing them in hexadecimal encoding, which is twice the size of you know, plain binary encoding. And we were also including the preview signature in each beacon. But that preview signature is actually already stored since it's just the previous beacon's signature. So you could just query the previous beacon and you would get that previous signature. So we are currently storing signatures twice. And that is not great because it's, yeah, storage we don't need to waste. And everything was being stored in a bold DB file. And bold DB is a plain key value database written in Go. And everything is, is stored in a single file. And one thing we noticed is that BoltDB does not support charting and it's pretty slow when you have a big file. Like if you have a database that is waiting a few gigabytes, you are talking about hundreds or even so hundreds of milliseconds or even seconds um, to perform one get or put operation. And that is pretty slow. And the bigger the database, the slower it gets. And we also had people asking us, if they could store maybe the beacons in a MySQL or PostgreSQL database. And so we decided to rewamp our wall storage backends for DRAN. And so we optimized the existing bold DB backend. Um, we, we are now using binary representation for the signatures. So that is as compact as it's possible. And we are also, uh, we've 
tweaked our bold DB settings to use a field percent of 100%. Because bold DB is a B3, is using a B3 implementation. And basically, since DRAN is only appending new data at the end, we never need to put them in the middle of the database. So we can just fill the database as compactly as we want. And, and that has allowed us to get a very nice, um, uh, like a very nice uh, performance uh, increase. So currently storing or getting data from our Bolt DB backend is almost a hundred times faster, uh, which is great. Uh, we're talking about the tens of milliseconds now instead of hundreds or even seconds. And also it allowed us to significantly shrink the existing database size by a factor of almost five. Um, going under a gigabyte for all the past data Tiran has been storing for the past two and a half year. And then we also, since we were working on storage, we thought we could just you know, add a few new backends. And that's what we did. So we added a PostgreSQL backend, which allows a node to connect to a PostgreSQL database and store the beacons there. So they don't need to care about backups and data integrity. It's the, database administrator that need to care about that. And also we added an in-memory backend because at the end of the day, we want as many partners to participate in the legal entropy. And we don't want the partners to leave the legal entropy because it's taking too much disk or whatsoever. The most important thing being that the, we have a lot of people that are participating to the threshold network to increase the, the trust we can put in that threshold network because it, the idea behind Duran's threshold network is that you trust that there is never a threshold amount of malicious nodes. And also you trust that the current members are not corrupt. And so the more members we have, if you can see a couple of people you know in, in there, you know, it increases the trust people would put in the system. And so that is a win for us. And so the in-memory backends allows you to skip storing beacons to disk and you would just store maybe the 1,000 or 2,000 last beacons, which are anyway the ones people are most interested in using, you know, and the ones that are getting uh, queried from the, the relays most often. And um, that's it. That's what we are launching in the run v1.5. Um, the League of Entropy is actually going to be launching a new mainnet network using the new cryptographic scheme, as well as the new uh, backend, uh, the new uh, storage backends in March, on the 1st of March. Um, this is very cool because it will enable us to do time lock encryption on the run mainnet, which is a super excited feature. We're very um, excited about, yeah, and that we are hoping to bring to FVM and to, uh, yeah. Um, like to have more people using time lock encryption very soon. And finally, yeah, uh, you can check the blog if you want to learn more about it. We will be publishing blog posts about the new cryptographic scheme, the storage backend, time lock, and so on in the upcoming weeks. And if you want a quick demo, I can show you the testnet uh, implementation. So currently, uh, I told you we launched on testnet. So we have the HTTP relay here. You can see we have three uh, chains. And if I go to the old chain, we can see it's a Pedersen BLS chain scheme. And so it's um, if, if we look at the, um, at the beacons, as I look, we can look at the latest beacon. We can see we have a short, relatively short randomness encoded as X. And then we have a pretty big signature as well as a pretty big previous signature. And if we look at the new network, it's using the BLS Unchain on G1 uh, scheme instead. So it has a much bigger public key compared to the uh, old network if we compare them. Um, but instead, if we go to the if we go to the latest signature, the latest beacon we can see now, we are not providing the previous signature because this is an unchained scheme. So we don't need the previous signature to verify the beacons. And the signature is also much smaller. And that's it, I guess, for my demo. Um,
Thank you for watching. If you are in Tokyo uh, next month for Real World Crypto, a quick shout out. We are organizing a randomness summit. So if you attend Real World Crypto, don't hesitate to check out the randomness summit link. It's a free event. It will be in the same venue as Real World Crypto. And yeah, I'm looking forward to questions or seeing users.